So I thought it was time to do a quick video about uh, the homing process on the K2, because uh, I, I think it's kind of interesting. And I have a similar video to this on the Voron 2.4. So uh, this printer is a um, fixed gantry printer, meaning that the bed moves while the print happens. Uh, that's how the Z moves. Uh, and this printer, just like my 2.4, uh, also has um, direct drive Z. So the steppers are directly moving the belts up and down uh, for the bed. It's a 13 pound bed. Uh, I've got 60 millimeter uh, beef uh, steppers taking care of that action for me. So I don't need the gearboxes to move the bed, but uh, most printers have gearboxes, uh, including the stock K2. Uh, because with the gearboxes, when the printer is powered off, the bed doesn't go anywhere. With this setup, uh, without any help, the bed would drop violently to the bottom. So you're talking about 15, 16 pounds of bed and bed frame just dropping straight to the bottom. Uh, so uh, what I've done here, just like I did on 2.4, uh, there are, uh, you can kind of see them in the top corners just a little, uh, there are um, keybacks for spring tension. So keybacks are an industrial uh, keychain that uh, something that's one like a janitor or a prison guard might have. And you have this huge, you know, uh, key ring with, uh, you know, like two pounds worth of keys, something like that. So uh, these keybacks are actually rated for 20 ounces of keys at full retraction. So if you had 20 ounces of keys on your belt with this uh, keychain holder, uh, it would hold them all the way up. So uh, the spring tension goes up as you extend uh, this type of device. So think about like a Something that would uh, do your uh, ID badge, right? You you pull your ID badge away from you, and the little the little reel lets out the cable. It gets tighter as you pull it out. So same thing goes with these. The spring tension goes up as as you extend them. So uh, bottom line, uh, these uh, largest uh, keybacks they're good for about three pounds a piece once you extend them a little bit. So I've got four of those on here. So uh, I expect it to be able to catch about twelve pounds of weight, and it does. Uh, so when I cycle the power, uh, I'm just going to uh, cycle the firmware here. When you cycle the firmware, all the printer enabled printer holds go away, right? So here goes. All right, so the firmware is recycled. So now the printer is unhomed and the steppers are not enabled. So I'm going to start the homing process here in just a second, but I'll go ahead and describe it because, uh, you know, the printer's a little loud and I don't want to uh, talk over it uh, too much here. Uh, so what's going to happen is there's going to be a series of, uh, so there's going to be X and Y home. You're not going to be able to see that too well, but up top, uh, the tool head is going to come towards us and home the, uh, the Y, and then it's going to go to the left and home the X. Uh, these are sensorless homing on the uh, gantry. So it's bumping the uh, ends of the rail to uh, the ends of the travel. So it's going to do that. Then it's going to drop the bed a little bit as a safety. And then it's going to do a series of uh, forced stepper moves. Uh, the, here's the thing. The bed on this printer is is offset. So this is a cross gantry. So the bed is offset to one corner. Uh, there's a lot of wasted space where the tool head uh, can't reach. So the bed is offset to the front corner. What that means is it skews down into the front corner, as you can see here. So because I know that behavior, what I do is I have a Z home override. And it detects that the uh, Z tilt, the leveling mechanism, has not been executed since the, pro the firmware was restarted. So it knows that it is in a fully skewed state. And I know what direction it's skewed in. When the power goes out and it drops down, you know what you know how it ends up skewing. Uh, same thing with the Voron 2.4. The Voron skews to the front. This printer skews to the front right corner, as you can see. So what I'll do is uh, uh, we'll home X and Y, and then before the Z is homed, I'll do a series of small stepper moves that'll pop the bed into its mostly level configuration. I have to do that because if I homed in this configuration, the bed frame, it's enough out of skew that the bed frame would end up hitting the bottom of the gantry. And that works. You can actually home and then do the Z-tilt on this printer after hitting the gantry a few times and letting the motor skip. But it sounds horrible. It's, it's not the right way to do things, right? So uh, I, I put in those overrides. It's going to bring the bed up level. 
and then it's going to bring the bed up, do the homing. Uh, you'll also see the tool head moving around a little more than you would expect as well uh, because it has a detachable probe. So it's it's moving over to the left and the back and grabbing the probe off the dock and returning the probe a few times. So I'm going to let this run. Um, once it starts doing the Z-Tilt, I'm probably going to cut the video short. I don't want to bore you. It's going to do the Z-Tilt. If you've ever seen a Voron do a quad gantry level, it's the same thing. It goes to all four corners and then performs forms a correction to level the bed closer to level and keeps doing that process until it reaches a threshold. So uh, I, I have the bed, uh, the bed has to level within a tenth of a millimeter for me to be happy. Once that's leveled up, uh, to start a print, you would warm the printer up and uh, I will probably do a hot bed mesh each time the printer is turned on. So each time I, I come up and start a, start the printer up for the day, this thing will take forever to warm up. It's got a huge printer bed. It's gonna pull like six, 700 watts of power. It's gonna take a long time to heat up. Once it's heated up, I'll do a bed mesh on it um, because I'm not guaranteed of how level it is and how that mesh will look for that time that the printer's turned on. So I've, I've yammered long enough. I'm gonna go ahead and start the process. It'll take just a few minutes. And then again, once it starts in with the Z-Tilt, I'll, I'll wrap the video up so you're not bored. So here we go, there's a process. So it's gonna home the Y. It'll home the X to the left. Now the Z is mostly level. I've done a series of moves to make it pretty level. Does it skew exactly the same way every time, right? So I can't be perfect, but that gets it close enough. And then I do the Z home to the center of the bed. And then fortunately, just the way this printer is built, uh, the way the firmware is built, it undocks the probe and then immediately has to go and or, or docks it and immediately has to go to undock it for the Z-Tilt. Unfortunately, it's just the way it works. Um, and if you wrote some custom code, you could have it skip the, those two steps. But this is a real generic process. It's just a G28, does the Z-Level. When it's done with the G28, it docks the probe. And then when it the, the next command is the Z-Tilt adjust and then it has to go grab the probe again. So a little inefficient. But anyway, so this is the Z-Tilt uh, Z adjust. Uh, it goes around just like a quad gantry level. It's the same exact thing as you would see uh, a Voron 2.4 doing. Uh, or even, um, my understanding is this will probably be the same uh, mechanism that a um, uh, 1.8 or a Triton would use with a triple Z. Do the same process. So um, the um, quad, the um, Z tilt adjust actually finished quicker than I thought. It got it within um, a fifth of a millimeter. I mean a uh, 0.5 millimeter. Uh, then it did a final uh, Z home uh, just to set the Z Z height one more time, and then it works. So um, I would probably do all of this hot. So I would probably warm the printer up and then do all these moves hot. And then I would, um, I will probably cook in a bed mesh right behind this. So my final process would be just what you saw here, plus it would do a seven by seven bed mesh. Seven by seven bed mesh is, you know, probably take a, it, it, it takes a little bit of time, but this is a 16 inch uh, or 400 millimeter plate. So um, I, I need lots of points on that plate to be accurate. So uh, the beds, uh, the, um, Plate's pretty level. It's within 0.2 millimeters uh, across the um, whole surface. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna cut this video short. I've already been going nine minutes. Don't wanna bore you. Uh, so anyway, that's what the um, K2 startup procedure looks like. Hope you enjoyed.